five, <coughs> four, three, two, two one. one. Take it. Boom! Off the back board is back, ladies and gentlemen. It's slims and big and slims and big and we up the backboard. Nice. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Boys and girls, cats and dogs, whoever is watching. Again, we all support dogs to watch. If your dog has an Instagram account, follow us. If your dog has a YouTube account, subscribe to us. Yeah. Just, you know, Fuck anyone them. that has an account, subscribe and you know, follow us. Also follow my dog's account. <laughs> yeah, Loki the wolf. <laughs> yeah. The wolf that sheds already. He's only had it for like two months. I guess it sheds. This guy's dog sheds wildly. No, it doesn't. Hmm? He's brushed every day. He's doing well. Your dog sheds like David Stern in the hospital. Proper. <laughs> That's not, it's not a good way to start the, the segment. All right. Um, so, yeah. Before we begin this podcast, we just want to say, uh, we just want to uh, kind of start off with uh, David Stern because he's been hospitalized for what, like a brain hemorrhage or something, something like that? It's been about yeah. a week and a half, two weeks now? Yeah. So, we just want to take this, like, a little moment to speak on his impact because a lot of, like, a lot of the young fans, they don't understand what David Stern did for well, the NBA. You know, like before, like the NBA, at one point, the salary cap was like $55 million. No, that was less. It was, less. It was a lot less. No yeah, one was yeah. making money. Like at a point, players were coming in yeah. at like 255 k Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, like that's like in the 80s and stuff, in the yeah. 90s. But like, so he pretty much took over the league, what, in 84? Roughly, yeah. 84, something like that. So he had he had it for over 30 years and... Pretty much the growth where the where the NBA was before him, and the NBA was when he gave it off to Adam Silver. Like it was, it's significantly different. Like he yeah. he made relations with China. And yeah, he did all over the world, like all over Brazil, the world. England. He made the game international. He played games in like uh, Montreal. Yeah. So yeah, like a lot of people give him this uh, reputation of being a dickhead because he like vetoed uh, the Chris Paul trade, and he did a bunch of other stuff. Like, and he was really like. Like Iron Fist, but like at the same time, he also really uh pushed the game forward and stuff. So like you know, get well soon and all that stuff. And yeah, pretty much. Adam Silver is amped. <laughs> Adam Silver's like if I ever fucked up for anything like that, he'd yeah. have to get give Deer Stern back a job. Uh, Adam Silver, low key, is probably is the best GM, uh, best uh commissioner ever. In sports history. In sports. Why? I I just feel like he's a lot more like he's he understands he's very progressive like he very under, he understands what the well again again he is progressive yeah but I feel like he's just I feel like he's trying to adapt to the culture way too fast like you know, during the draft like I see him like dapping up all the black guys yeah. like my that, dog and I'm blessed. like I'm like I'm like it's like I'm like like where you play your role yeah you know like, I think no. if you played your role like yeah. I would respect you a lot more yeah but when you play that role like ah my dog yeah. like. Then it's like, hey, are you like the commissioner? Yeah. Or are you like, you know, are you trying to be everyone's dogs? Yeah, like, yeah. what are you looking for? No, I, I, I kind of like that. I like the fact that he's kind of in tune with the with the culture of everything, mm -hmm. and like he's like the only commissioner that lets their players like speak on social issues and stuff. Like yeah. NFL, like the, like fucking Kaepernick kneeled, and three years later he still doesn't have a job. Like, <laughs> like you know, so like he can't even get a Nike contract. Yeah. yeah. Like so, like there's like a lot of bullshit like that in other leagues, but we don't like you know they, uh, Adam Adam Silver is very transparent. So yeah, Adam Silver, he know. let them wear those shirts, right? Yeah. The, yeah. the what was it? I think it was after some shooting, and they mm -hmm. had to, they got to wear that. They let them wear them. They let them wear them shirts. Yeah. Like I don't. I, I feel like I feel like remember like during the national anthem, the All Star game, Fergie, when Fergie started like yeah. yelling and yeah. everyone started dying. Yeah. I thought Adam Silver was gonna come on and apologize. Yeah. And like you know, like yeah, address yeah. it. Man, I didn't say nothing. Nothing. If that yeah. was David Strait, but oh, you guys are all getting fined. Yeah, he's like, he's like yeah, he's Donald Trump. David and, Strait is Donald Trump. And like he all and like and Adam Silver also like let let all the players wear whatever shoes they want. Like you know, before they had to wear the, the certain, oh, yeah, you know, white. it's a lot of stuff. Like the commission really actually do play a huge role. Like Adam Silver really set, set the tone. Adam Silver came in. Uh, Nate Robinson was wearing Yeezy twos. Yeah, he's wearing he's wearing red October. Yeah, yeah, sorry, David Stern. David Stern. Yeah, yeah, David Stern. yeah, David Stern really <laughs> set the tone for the uh, for Adam Silver and taught him pretty much everything he he knew because he was under his wing for so long and he's pretty much set the NBA up for like the next hundred years to be the best best most successful league. Like it's gonna take over as the number one league in a, in North America, in my opinion. I don't think it is gonna be. You don't think it's gonna pass like football? No, I feel like they just like they, I feel like football football is just so loved in America. Even though it's such a, even though even though it's such a like a small season, yeah. it's so loved. I feel like with the emergence of like CTE uh, studies and stuff, it's gonna be on its decline. 
soon. And the thing is the fact that um, the NFL isn't really progressive. There's too many racist fans in the NFL. That's I think that's the biggest. That like racist culture in the NFL yeah, really yeah. bigs up the uh, yeah. Really bigs up the NFL. Like if they didn't have all that racist culture. Yeah. yeah. And, but I also uh, think like the way the like the way the cl- the social climate is going. Mm-hmm. I feel like that racist culture is going to backfire on the NFL. That's my opinion. That's why I think the NBA is going to think because they're just getting ahead of the curve. And they understand that the world is going yeah. towards the younger people, you know? I feel like the next league that legalizes marijuana use, it's going to skyrocket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The next M- league. I think NBA is, I think NFL, I think, uh, not MLB, MLB just did that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. MLB, MLB skyrockets, but only in October. Yeah, yeah. Like no one wants to. I'm, uh, yeah, I watch yeah. baseball, but I'm watching about 164 games. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, that's there's way too many. Uh, it's a hundred. Yeah. They play every day. Yeah, it's way too many. Like games. seven days a week is like 30 games. I can't watch all that. Yeah, and it's like it's too it's, much. It's way too much, and it's like, like yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. But yeah, um, we could talk about fixing other leagues all we want, but uh, let's just talk about the NBA, I guess, because that's the best league. NBA. All right, so. Today is what December sixteenth, so that means yesterday was officially the lift on the moratorium. So every so this past off season, forty percent of the players moved teams of the NBA. So right. like four four out of four fifty, forty percent of them switched to a new team. So what happens um on December fifteenth for the for the fans that don't know this. Um, is that the um, the all the people that signed with new teams they're officially allowed to be traded now. They couldn't have been traded. They couldn't have been traded. So like, let's say Kawhi Leonard just signed with the Clippers, and the Clippers like, they couldn't sign. They couldn't trade him until today, mm-hmm. because that's how that's the way the contracts work. So officially today, forty percent of the league is opened up. Now everyone in the league is eligible for trade. So with that being said, with all those options and trades coming up, uh, what what teams do you think should sell, and what teams do you think should start buying? And like you know, like buyers are obviously going to be people that are going into the contention, like looking for playoffs, mm-hmm. maybe even the championship this year. Sellers might be good, uh, not as good teams that have good talent but aren't being utilized, and they're trying to go in yeah. a different direction. So, what team do you think should be buyers? What team? You, what teams do you think should be sellers? Uh, I think Chicago should start selling. Selling on who? Selling on like marketing. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Marken is young though. Like I think Marken is young. He's not progressing. It's been like, three years, two years, two years, and like we're not seeing a twenty plus out of him already. I don't think for how high he was drafted. Yeah, yeah. there's no twenty plus coming out of him. I I don't know. I kind of like Marken. He's a yeah. he's a good shooter. He I haven't seen much of his like the rest of his game progress or anything. He's okay. He's okay. He doesn't yeah. play defense. Barely gets rebounds. He's yeah, okay. yeah, he's just like a really tall shooter. Mm-hmm. That it's like he's like Porzingis without the defense, and without stuff. the speed of the defense. There's like there's nothing on him. Yeah, yeah, like nothing about him equips what the, the Chicago's like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cleveland number one team should fucking sell. Oh yeah, they should sell the entire roster. Yeah, yeah, and that actually ties into my buyer because my buyers are my first buyer is the Blazers. I feel like the Blazers should immediately jump on uh Ke- the Kevin Love deal. Yeah, the Kevin Love deal, the Colin Sexton should, deal. They should get all, they should get all of them. I don't think they should go for Sexton. They should get all of them. They need a back. They need someone on the backup. They have those young guys. Yeah. But like Nasir Little's only nope. in his first year. Who? Nasir Little. Yeah. Only in his first year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see him coming in and like busting ass. I don't, I don't. Colin Sexton already busting ass on yeah, Cleveland. Yeah. As we know, yeah. Colin Sexton is busting ass. Yeah. So the Colin Sexton goes to Portland and he busts his ass. Yeah. Gets Lillard breaks. McCollum. Yeah. Everyone gets a break. That way, everybody can, you know, play. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the more players you have that are scoring. Yeah. The more wins you guys get, yeah, yeah. like a team that again, for example, the Lakers, like they have two players that are scoring constantly, yeah. but they have many, many other players that are actually scoring ten over plus. Yeah, which is why they win games, which is why we're in first. Yeah, Portland. We'll talk about them later. Portland has two people scoring twenty plus a game. Yeah, Hassan White that maybe gets six and like twelve. Yeah, Carmelo six points. Points. Like respect him. Two for, he's two, averaging sixteen. Two for like thirty eight. He's averaging sixteen. This guy's points been yo. He's I think on he's forty five percent shooting. Okay, he's doing well. Oh, he's okay. Leave my boy alone. What's the call? I think Portland's definitely a buyer. I don't know about Colin. I don't know if Cleveland gets rid of Colin Sixton already. I think they're gonna hold on to him, especially since he's young. Kevin Love definitely. Uh, Tristan Thompson definitely. Um, they have. A f- Few other guys, I feel like uh, not Rodney Hood. Sorry, what's his name? Um, Jordan Clarkson, like those kind of guys. Mm. I feel like they're gonna get rid of those guys. They can really get like you know even a pick. Like I feel like Kevin Love, you can get like a player and a pick. Um, 
which which would help Cleveland. Thompson, you get a pick out of that, or or like a couple of players and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like they have solid pieces that could go and help contenders. Uh, another t- another team that I think should buy right now. I think uh, the Wolves definitely need a point guard, and they should go after the point guard that they're getting in the off season. Uh, uh, D'Angelo Russell. Mm. He's on the he's on the Warriors right now. He's like the only All Star they have that's not injured. Okay, no, Draymond's not injured either. No. But I think the Warriors should definitely be in sell mode right now. They should definitely get rid of D'Lo and get what uh, what they can get. They okay, so pretty much they got D'Lo because Kevin Love was uh, not uh, Kevin Love. Kevin Durant was gone. Yeah. And so they didn't want to lose him for nothing. They got D'Lo. Cut your losses. Get a get a couple pick get a pick or two from Minnesota. Get like a a young player or like get like like who who would who would uh Minnesota give up in that? Um, I have no I have no clue. <laughs> what they, I have no clue. I have nobody. Who, I don't know who plays on Minnesota. They probably give up like Georgie Dang and like and like two first rounders. Georgie Dang. I don't know Covington. I don't, if I'm them, I'm trying to hold on to Covington. Rumors are going on that uh, Chris Paul might be going to Minnesota. Okay, that's the rumor of the day. They're looking that for that. Would be they're looking to do like a Chris Paul maybe going to Minnesota. He's on trading blocks right now. I like that. Oh, actually, I kind of don't like that because Chris Paul. I don't think his age lines up with the other guys' of the age. He brings that veteran point guard thing and all that stuff, but I feel like he takes away from, uh, from uh, what's it called? There's the one I was playing there, buddy. From Wiggins. There's no one else playing there. What do you mean? Wiggins is having a career. No, I mean, there's no, there's no one other point guard that's playing there. That's playing in Dayton. There's no other good point guard on the team. There's no on good point team? guard on in Minnesota. Yeah, they have Teague and Ding. Yeah. Who's their backup? Oh, uh, I forgot his name. It's not Tyus Jones anymore. Yeah, I know. It's, some, it's that other guy. What's his name? I forgot his name. But what's it called? It's Shab- is it Shabazz Napier? No, I think, he's, I think he's on Portland, no? I think so. I don't even know. He's on Portland. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think oh the Wolves should go after D Lo. I think that would solidify them. And what are they fifth in the in the West right now? That could potentially put them in the top four spot. Um you have someone to go to in the clutch that's not just Wiggins and thing. Like it gives you so many options. He, he's a very good uh pick and roll ball handler. You can get the ball to cat. Um, I don't know. His defense is shaky, but he gives you buckets. He gives you assists. He gives you like he can. He's a floor general. Uh, Chris Paul is definitely a guy that could be moving. I don't see anyone going for that forty mil right now. The only team I really saw him going to was Miami, and I don't think Miami's gonna make that trade anymore because yeah. they have too much to lose. Like you don't want to give up Kendrick Nunn, you don't want to give up Tyler Hero, you don't want to give up Bam Adebayo. You don't want to give up Jimmy Butler. You don't want to give up uh, who else do they have? They have they have a really good team with very really, a lot of they young guys. They do, but they never know. They might even trade up for like Drew Holiday. See, that's another. That's, that's another. those are other guys I'm trying to see selling. So like, Pelicans. There, there's like Drew. There's like the Reddick. whole entire like Reddick. Pelicans team. Reddick. Drew and Reddick are Drew definitely Reddick. two guys that can go and help any team. Exactly. Um. Yeah. There's a lot of teams that are selling. The Raptors, I think, should sell. Sell who? Lowry, Gasol, Ibaka. All three of them should be gone by trade deadline. Lowry, Gasol, Ibaka. Uh, For who? No, it, I don't. It doesn't matter. I think they should just be off the roster. Just so you don't make the playoffs. Pit. No, I think they don't need those three. Look, I, I'm. I don't. Okay, I don't think the Raptors should be banking on a deep playoff run. I think they should give up just because they're expiring deals. Like, okay, Kyle Lowry, you get another year, but Kyle Lowry. You don't want to wait another year and let him lose his value. I feel like he's taken away from Freddie. Freddie, as oh, yeah. when he came back from the from the from the injury into the lineup, they went on a three game losing streak. They haven't been the same team. Pa- Pascal Siakam hasn't been the same player. They they have this different energy when Freddie's on the floor that that I've noticed. Mm-hmm. So I feel like moving on from Lowry now would be do him justice because he can go to a a good team, a contending team, be that third fourth option point guard that they need, aka maybe so Minnesota as well. Uh, or like you know, he can go somewhere else or get his and get his money and stuff. Gasol and Ibaka are two bigs that can help any team looking that for that shot blocking presence going into the playoffs. Uh, they're still very serviceable. Gasol is in spurts. If you're a team that's going to go against Jokic or going to go against Embiid or going to yeah. go against Carl Anthony Towns, you need someone like Tristan Thompson. You, you need someone like Tristan Thompson. You need yeah. someone like Gasol, Ibaka. You need those kind of players. Mm-hmm. And um, so those guys are, are good in specialty roles, a block against the floor, all that stuff. So those are teams that I think that should be selling at the deadline. They're, who else could be selling right now? Um, no idea who else. 
It's not yeah. OKC, but that's a yeah. OKC, <laughs> Toronto, uh, Pelicans. Are I think those are the three big guys that should be selling. Not, and that's not even like not the Suns. The Suns have no one. The to Suns sell. are still in contention. I feel like they can do a regular. Let's let's not get it twisted. The Raptors are still in contention. I just feel like they can get rid of those guys and still be in the playoff race uh-huh. and get some stuff back and look built towards the future. For sure, you know, for sure, that's, for sure. that's definitely what I for think sure. they should do. But I still feel like yeah, you've, I still feel like whether we get rid of Gasol or anybody, there's not really many options available. Yeah. In order for them to do that, so they just they just giving it up for space. No one, I'm, I think, there's no one else that wants to play in Toronto anymore. Yeah, Toronto's had their shine. Yeah, so I think they sh- I think players are like, okay, yeah, we'll take a break. Like, okay, we all, we, they all everyone wants to love, a, you know, everyone wants to quiet under love. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's never gonna be a quiet under love to give out again. Yeah. Where it's feel like I'm gonna break, I'm gonna break this news right now. I heard from a little bird, uh, Wiggins is coming to Toronto on his next contract. Bubber. He's coming home. Uh, Wiggins are. Can I ask you a question? On, on the honest cool. question. Cool. What is he going to do there? Wiggins? No, no, just give me like honest truth. Like give me like a five step. What is he going to do there? Wiggins I'm gives you 25 points Dog, a game. I'm tired of hearing this guy, bro. Wiggins I'm gives you 25. I'm tired of this guy. Wiggins will give them 25 points from the three spot. From the two spots, sorry. What, everyone else that wants to shoot bear, that's how he's going to do it? Wiggins will give Yeah, people like Norman Powell that want to take 10 shots a game, 12 shots a game. Yeah, okay. I and make only six points. His contract's up in... Three years. Okay. So give him three years. Norman Powell's still, Norman Powell's never leaving Toronto. <laughs> Why? Norman Powell is a cockroach. He's never leaving Toronto. He's coming off the bench. Norman Powell is never. So what? He's, He's never gonna, leaving. Yeah, that's fine. He Yo, can he can never leave. That's Norman not an Powell issue. was like like uh, who's a Toronto player that never left? That I can think of um, Amir Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> like Amir Johnson, like he never left. Cockroach. Like he just, like he just won't leave. Yeah. So like yo, there's players on Toronto. Yeah. That just make you not want to be there in three years. Like this bare time, I see Norm Powell pull up a shot, and Kawhi's there, like, not again, yeah. bro. Which is like, this um, is why he didn't. You remember that tunnel? He didn't dap him. Yeah. This is why he doesn't get dapped. All right, all right. So I'm gonna break it right now. Also, RJ Barrett is also coming to Toronto when his contract's up. The Knicks are gonna ruin, like everything around. The him Knicks are nothing. The only yeah. thing the Knicks have is that not that that center they have Robinson. What his name is? Oh, thing. I don't uh, even know his name. Glenn Rob. No, Glenn Rob. No, that no. big ass kid. Huge ass, seven feet tall. Fuck yeah, I know. Defensive you rebounding machine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Robinson. That's the only mm. thing going for that team. But Mitchell Robinson. Sorry. There you go. But what's it called? So I'm gonna break it right now. The the Knicks are gonna fuck up so badly that RJ leaves. And we're gonna get him, and then uh, we're also gonna get Andrew Wiggins because both their contracts end the same year. Do, 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 do. Yo, you have high, you actually have high hopes. They're for coming them. home, bro. Why would they pay the American tax when they can just pay Canadian tax? There you go. You have high hopes. There you go for Toronto, and I'm not gonna sit here and tell you mm, that's gonna be fine. Right. It's not gonna be fine. You also have high hopes for the Lakers, like waiting into our next part. You also have high hopes for the Lakers. Don't I you? don't have. It's not that I have high hopes. Yeah. Is that <clears throat> so? You think they're what I've been seeing is they're believing it because they're definitely doing a good job. All right, so so you think they're legit? I think they're the real deal. And you think they're the favorite right now to win the chip? Yes. Okay, so why is that? What is it? Okay, yeah, anyone can say, "Yo, you give LeBron AD, boom, there you go." But no, what no, is no. Spe- what is it specifically that you see? You know, you know what it is. What there's like there's different type of puzzles. You have a twenty piece puzzle, forty piece puzzle, hundred piece puzzle. Yeah. This is a thousand piece puzzle. Yeah. And every piece in that puzzle has been found, yeah. and I couldn't be any more happier. Yeah. Like every ass, every player on the team yeah. has a role. It's like, remember that team when LeBron had when he had Sasha Pavlovich and they made it far. Yeah. It's like that. Imagine that Kobe, team. Kobe. But just uh huh. Pardon. You said Co- You said oh, you said LeBron. Yeah. Kobe. Uh huh. Well. Sasha Pavlovich. Yeah. You mean in Kobe's team. Sasha Pavlovich was playing on Cleveland with Larry Hughes. Oh and Daniel he Gibson. Was, he was also playing with Kobe. Eric I think Snow. Talking about them. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. And Eric Snow. Yeah. Like that garbage team. And Wally Sarsby. Yeah. 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 All those guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is Juno Ogalskis, Drew Gooden. Okay, those guys are the nice. Team that went to the final. Those guys are nice. And got swept. Yeah. But see what I mean? Like yeah. it's that kind of team, but with players that are that have been in the NBA for so long yeah. that are doing more than I've expected. Yeah. Like, Rondo's coming out doing this thing. Dwight's coming out doing this yeah. thing. I don't know who the hell... I don't even know where the hell they got this kid from. Alex Caruso, where the hell his... That guy looks like he's 50 years old yeah. and plays like he's 19. 
Yeah, banging it. Like he's nice. Danny Green. Like everyone's yeah. just playing their role. Yeah. Which is why they're being so unstoppable. It's like it's like you know you get a girl and you're like you check off every box. Every box is checked off. Yeah. The Lakers are the most sexiest looking girl in the damn world right yeah. now. Yeah, I think from what I've seen, the biggest things is yeah, Kuzma's been disappointing this year. Let's be completely honest. But the I think their third option right now is a combination of Rondo and Dwight Howard. Rondo and Dwight Howard combined are ge- are playing that third option on that team. Like they're passing the ball, uh, rebounding, exactly. scoring, rebounding. So, so what's better than having a one third option? Two third options. Yeah, yeah. They they look pretty good. I won't even lie to they you. They look fantastic. They look unbeatable. They're not unbeatable. They. Because you know what? Bring why? Milwaukee. We got them. Okay, I'm not saying Milwaukee. Milwaukee, I'm not really... Like, yeah, they have a 17-game win streak, which we will talk about next. But I don't see Milwaukee... They're just not legit to me. There's something about them. Like I feel, They're not the real deal sex appeal? Yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> there's... I don't feel like Giannis, like, that, like alone... I, they're just missing star power. That's what it is. Yeah, Giannis is a star, and after that, it fizzled out for me. It's not enough. My only thing for them is, it's not even about the stars right now. No. It's about getting into the playoffs. Yeah. And when you get into the playoffs, the guys that are playing good now, yeah. forget who the fuck they are. Yeah. Like, I, I realized that. Like, Milwaukee's that kind of team. Yeah. Milwaukee's like Duke. Milwaukee, will, like, Duke will come in, bust everyone's ass all season, win every tournament. But as soon as they come to the NCAA tournament, where's Duke losing? Number one. Yeah. Number they're losing in the first round, round of sixty four, yeah. by a team like Lehigh. Like you know, like you know what I mean? Like it's just Yeah. There's really like they need to have their like like their ass has to be on a fucking chair yeah. and be ready to fucking work. Yeah. Cause if they're not, yeah. when it comes to playoff time and yeah. they forget who they are, they're also falling off that chair. Also with the Lakers, KCP needs to be immediately removed from that roster. Like, What's wrong with him? Bro, like I was watching that game against <laughs> Miami the other day. The dude grabbed the rebound, went up the whole court. I thought he's gonna give it off to LeBron so he can reset mm. and like you know steal some time. Pull up three. They're up like five points or three points. Hey man, some people think uh, KCP could be the next Stephen Curry. Relax. <laughs> no. Remember that one game we had like 12, 12 or fourteen points in the fourth quarter? Yeah, and then everyone posted a picture. Yeah, but like, KCP, oh, KCP. Yeah. KCP. Man, so fucking. Man came ass. back after. Had a thicker headband on, just kept going like He's this. He's so ass, bro. <laughs> KCP is trash. Like, the guy, bro, they were down. They were up three. All you had to do is kill the clock, or they're going to get fouled. Oh, no, they're up five. They're, all they had to do is kill the clock, get it to LeBron, let him hold it, kill the clock, we'll do whatever. You're. This guy pulls, gives Miami the ball back. They come back, score a two, one possession game at that point. KCP's a bean. He's an idiot. I don't know why you pulled that. Like, it was so stupid. Like, I watched that. I'm like, yo, that's something I would do on, on ball runs. I didn't get to watch that one. Yeah, that was, that was a good game, though. That was a really good game. I heard. Uh, what's it called? Uh, what's that kid's name uh, on Miami? The shooter. Uh, he has, like, Duncan, Robin- uh, Duncan Robinson? Mm. He's Number 55. Wet. No, He's also no. like, bro, Miami has really no. good young talent. I think his name is Duncan Robinson. Yeah, yeah he has like the two. He's yeah, like he's butter. Tim Duncan thing Robinson. Yeah, yeah, he's wet, bro. He was just wet. Like he's just, he's super wet. Like that game, we I didn't really see him shoot that much, but like with the past, I think 10, 12 games, he's been like hitting like at least three. The good thing is he plays defense too. Yeah, so if you guys have fantasy leagues, he only has a forty percent own rate. So if you guys want that, go get that. Um, How do you know he has a forty percent own rate? Because I'm a fantasy guy. Did you pick him up? No, I don't have fantasy this year. So how do you know? I can't deal with the stress, but I'm just I'm in the loop, man. What can I say? Um. Yeah. All right. So the Bucks have a 17 game win streak. All right. We just talked. We just touched on the Bucks and okay. why we don't think they're legit, or don't think they're gonna win at all. But Giannis has showed considerable improvement now in the three point game. He's shown that confidence to shoot it. His his it's still herky jerky, it still doesn't look that right. But he's starting to show that he has a reliable jump shot, thirty three percent or thirty five percent, which is league average. So with that addition, do you think do we think the Bucks are legit? Like do we think the Bucks are going to the finals? No. Who's going to the finals? From the East? Yeah. Uh for me it's still going like Indiana or to like Toronto. Indiana. Oh. And with Old Depot back, yeah. See, that's what I was saying too, but the thing is, there's a lot of ifs with Indiana, in my opinion, there is. Um, 
what depot do we get back? Do we get depot back right off the bat? Like, boom, he's going nuts. No, we get oh, like, we get, we get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, we get, like, the singing. No, yeah, yeah. Well, like, 12 points a game, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. The American Idol, uh, all in depot. Like, yeah. You know, hitting the high notes and all that stuff. Yeah. But he's not going to be, like, <laughs> depot, depot. You get what deep, I'm saying? We're not going to get depot, depot. So, it's hard to get deep. It's hard to get depot, depot. That's what I'm saying. Like, if he comes back by all-star break and has time to work off the rust... I can see Indiana like getting in with that sixth seed and yeah. doing some damage in that first round, mm-hmm. like and just like upsetting people. Um, I don't know about the finals, but I definitely think they have a really good shot at upsetting maybe the Sixers. If they get the Raptors in the first round, they could probably pull that off. I they think really they definitely can pull that off. Yeah. They look like a very complete team. They still have Sabonis and yeah. Miles Turner and. Both the Holiday brothers are doing well. They're mm-hmm. they're closing games out together. There's a thing too. Um, Malcolm Brogdon. Yeah, Malcolm Brogdon, p- huge pickup. That team is that backcourt with Depot and Malcolm Brogdon with lockdown players. Too. I have some other guy too. I forgot his name is. Um, used to play for Phoenix. Uh, T.J. Warren. Mm. Yeah, T.J. Warren. Yeah, yeah, he's hitting he's hitting shots and doing his thing. Um, no, the Pacers I definitely think are pretty are a very dark horse team. Um, honestly, they're not playing well together. They're losing games and stuff, but the, I think the star power, you can't really deny it. The I think they're just really trying to get a really good playoff spot. The Sixers? I think, no, not the Sixers. It's all the Pacers. You think so? Yeah, I think they're really just playing for a good playoff spot. I just, right? Because, like, it's like, yeah. there's not many contenders in the East yeah. that can really, like, you know, just, like, skyrocket everywhere. Like, we're not going to expect the Pistons to go in third. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, for the Pacers, it's like, they're really just, like... Mellowing and like trying to put their foot inside. Yeah, them. they're trying to just hold it down until until Depot comes back. I think by the time it's like six games, they're gonna be clinched. Yeah, I think I think we should talk about the Sixers mm-hmm. because um they have a very good team, like on paper. They have Ben Simmons, they have Josh Richardson, they have Tobias Harris, uh, Al Horford, Embiid, Cork Maz, Cork Maz. Uh, who's that? Um, Jeff Ennis. The James, James, Ennis, Michael, his name is. James Ennis, Michael Scott, yeah. like that other Turnbull guy. Was name is. Yeah, they have a very okay. It's a very top heavy team, yeah. but that's a very good team. Very that's tall team. Very tall, very big team. Are they contenders or pretenders? What are we thinking? Contenders on pretenders. You that's think the on pretenders or pretenders? Con- you said on <laughs> contenders or pretenders. I think as of now they are pretenders. I read a segment uh, about two weeks ago about Shaq saying that the only way they can become legit is if Embiid goes and dropping 22 points a game to being an actual big boy, stop being a bitch complaining and dropping 28 points a game. Yep. Which I, is a big statement. Yeah. Which is a massive st- Like Shaq said he went in and out day and night and dropped 28, 27. Like nothing. Th- and didn't complain. He was getting snuffed and stuff. Didn't yeah. complain. But Embiid's going there getting his ass tickled and complaining about 22, 23 points a game. Yeah. Pretenders. You think they're pretenders? Definite pretenders. So what do you think? Even, they can, with, even with a three-point shot that Ben Simmons is growing, pretenders. You think You think they can... So what do you think they have to do to take that next step? They should have Al, Al Horford. Al Horford was useless. For them. Al Horford was useless. They already had a big man. Yeah. Al Horford was useless. They should have got somebody like that's big that can just stay inside. Like if they got Tyson Chandler, count me in. Yeah. But they got a guy who's really just like... 10 steps maybe behind Embiid. Yeah. Play just second beat, shoot second beat. It does everything Embiid does. Two of the same guy does not fix you. It yeah. makes you wrong. Yeah. So good luck, I'd say. Yeah. But pretenders for me. I th- okay, so right now, as of now, they're definitely pretenders, but I think they are all I th- I'll, I I'm gonna say they're contenders. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna say they're contenders because at the end of the day when the playoffs start and the rotation is shortened, it's about your best five guys. And I think they, regardless of who they play, they have the best five guys. And I think they're going to figure it out. I think Embiid, there's something going to click for Embiid. I think that that thing with uh, Shaq, mm-hmm. I think it might have might have opened something up for them and stuff. Like, I think mm-hmm. it got into his head. I think Embiid realizes that he has, he has to put this team on his back and he has mm-hmm. to get into the post and, and go nuts and not shoot threes. I really think Embiid should stop really focusing on social media and really focus on his ball skills. Yeah. That's the only way it's gonna be fixed, and that's what I think. That's what LeBron did. Remember that year uh, when he just went like zero dark thirty in the playoffs. Mm. 
And from then, he's been having success. Like, before that, he would be... Like, I remember when it was against Dallas, he would be on Twitter the night before at, like, yeah. 2 in the morning. And he was tweeting and shit. And he was like, yo, ask LeBron James this. Ask me this. Ask yeah. me that. And I still remember that. I'm like, yo, what the hell? What's this guy doing? Like, it's the finals. Like, a finals game tomorrow. Yeah. And then the next year, he went Zero Dark 30. Boom. He went nuts. And that's when he won. And he finals MVP. And that was the final, the final moments of his career. Yeah. So, I think MB should take a similar approach. In the regular season's cool. Have fun. Do your thing. But when playoffs come, I think he should come off the social media, get serious, lock in. He's still young, so I'm not really going to, like, you know, like, haggle him too much. I he's 24, 25. Yeah. So he still has some, a way to go, but he, he's going to have to switch at some point. I think the biggest thing for the Sixers, I don't think Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid can exist together. Yeah, I agree with that, too. I think Ben Simmons needs to be on team. Actually, no, I don't agree with that. Why? I don't care what that is. I think Ben Simmons is just such a facilitator with the ball. Yeah. Like, he's just so, like, giving the ball away so much, yeah. more than scoring. Yeah. That's what Embiid needs. Embiid needs touches to, like, to, like, you know, in order for them to win games. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I see games where Embiid goes, like, 12 for, like, 32. Yeah. They win games. But when Ben Simmons goes 12 for 32, they don't do as good. Yeah. Here's, here's my issue with Ben Simmons and Embiid. When you're a point guard that can't shoot, it puts a lot of pressure on... On your big, no. um, what happens is when you're trying to do entry passes, um, and you can't shoot, the the guy who's defending the 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 point guard is gonna drop down and it's gonna he can double and help off and he doesn't have to worry about Ben Simmons being a threat. Yeah. He's not gonna pull it. Ben Simmons is a bit. He needs to be around four other guys that can shoot a big that can shoot. He because the thing is, big, Ben Simmons is the biggest point guard in the league. He might be the biggest point guard ever. Yeah, I think he's under under Magic. He's right above Magic Johnson. Yeah, so he might be the biggest point guard ever. So the fact of the matter is that Ben Simmons doesn't have a he doesn't have a jump shot. He's uh, yeah, he's taking shots now, but he doesn't have a jump shot. He needs to be in the post, working out of the high post, maybe making plays out of the high post po- mm-hmm. passing, and take advantage of the smaller guards. That's I think what he has to be doing. You can't do that with another big like Embiid because Embiid should be down low too. No. What do you? What, what? Embiid's more of an outside kind of big man. No, and definitely not. If, if we say no, we look, look, we say no. Yeah. But majority of the time, when Embiid gets the ball, it's not in the paint. That no, that's that's his issue though. I think that's mm. his issue. He should be getting the ball in the paint. He's the biggest player in the league. He's like seven three. Let's wait. Yeah. He's seven. He's seven three. He has the best post moves in the league since fucking who knows. He has better post moves than Shaq. Since Amir Johnson. I said Amir Johnson. Relax. But yeah, he has like the best post game in the fucking NBA. He's the biggest guy in the NBA. There's no way he should not be in the post. The thing, the issue with the Sixers is the fact that since Ben Simmons is on the floor and he's and he can't shoot, they're doubling Embiid. So that means Embiid is less likely to go into the post and he's gonna start shooting threes. Because why would he post up if if the guy is always getting du- he's always doubling him? You know that's that's my issue with the Sixers. Embiid and Simmons cannot exist with each other. They're they're stopping each other. Yeah, they're both trans they're trans uh transcendent talents and generational talents and have ability to be go down and top whatever in their position, but they their styles don't match together. And until Ben Simmons gets a jump shot, they're not going to match. I think the Sixers, Elton Brand's done a good job with them since he's gotten them. He's uh he's been very aggressive with trades. I think he should try and sell high on him, on Simmons now. I think out of the two, you pick you take Embiid for sure. Embiid's definitely the better player. Wow. Uh, I think you sell high on Simmons and get what you can and get a point guard that can actually stretch the floor and stuff. That's what point guard would you rather get? I'm still pro Ben Simmons and thing. I love him. I think that team, if you took out Ben Simmons and put in like D'Lo, if you put in someone like uh, the current Lonzo, with the one that's shooting, mm. the one that's hitting the, the, 33, the, the 33%, the, the one, one that, the one that went from that, this to, what is it? It's like, it's, it's, it's more like, yeah, yeah, that Lonzo, that Lonzo that's learned, like he's, he's looking pretty, like he's not a knockdown shooter yet, but I, like the way I see his mechanics and shit, he's definitely on the route to, to being a knockdown shooter. Like he's like I I like I like the stri- the improvements I'm seeing from him. Those are improvements I expected from Ben Simmons two years ago. So the fact that Lonzo's making those now, I'm a big fan of that. He's definitely someone I think that fits them better because he does everything that that Ben Simmons does. 
but now he has a shot more. That's more. Be- that's better than thing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's do you think if they got? Do you think getting rid of a JJ Redick was a bad idea for them? The worst idea. Worst idea. I think the fact that they were able to give Horford thirty million a year and they had cheaped out on giving Redick ten to twelve million a year, horrible. They have no shooting. Like Josh Richardson's good. He can shoot the ball. Play defense. Play defense. Does his thing. But if you had JJ Redick and Josh Richardson. Now your floor is getting stretched even more. The biggest thing with the Sixers is spacing. Today's league, being the biggest team is not enough anymore. Yeah, you can guard everyone, but on the other side, the lanes get clogged because not enough shooters. Horford's a good shooter for a big man, but he's a good shooter for a big man. He's not a good shooter. Uh, like, you know, I'm not relying on him to hit four, five threes. Mm-hmm. Ben Simmons can't shoot. Josh Richardson. Tobias Harris is your best shooter on your team, and he's, like, average. Oh, no, uh, he's league average right now. Yeah, he's league average. So without, even without Curry and Clay Thompson there, I, still, I think he's a bit above average. Yeah, yeah, a bit above. Yeah, a bit above. But yeah, like, but it's nothing. There's nothing special from their shooting. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, I, be, I just, I just, I just became so in love with the whole Ben Simmons situation. Yeah, because even when Embiid was gone and Ben Simmons was just like, see, and that's the thing. That's, that's, I think that's 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 the reason why I'm saying that's why they kept him. Yeah. So when he came back, I was really watching it. And I was like. This guy's still giving him the ball. Yeah. It's not like Ben Simmons is not. You forget It's not like Ben Simmons not giving him the ball. It's not yeah. like we're playing two K. Yeah. And like Ben Simmons in the comments dunk the ball. Like. Yeah. Like they're actually giving the ball. You know they're passing the ball around. Ben yeah. Simmons is getting it. Joel Embiid scoring. Like, you know, it's getting it's getting circulated around the, the court. Yeah. So I don't think they really gotta like get rid of Ben Simmons. Yeah. I think they should really just keep it and try to fix His the coaching. Is. I'd say. Oh, so you think it's Brett Brown? So now. I think Brett Brown really needs to be replaced. With a more defensive oriented coach. Oriented, um, what is that word called? Uh, coach. coach. I don't know so, would you suggest maybe Fisdale? Fisdale, no. Who would you suggest? I think Fisdale can be given everybody and Fisdale will still be terrible. Oh, you think it's terrible? Yeah, I don't know what yeah, Fisdale can get everybody, and it still wouldn't go well. I think Fisdale, was, he was like one of the defensive coordinators for that for that Miami team. So, I don't know. I think he could do pretty well with the... With a team like the Sixers. He's an assistant, though. Yeah, but he was like the defensive coordinator. But, like, he was given LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. Yeah. But, like... I don't know what you're going to do with Ben Simmons. Like, I mean, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, LeBron James. Yeah. Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons. Yeah. Oh, Horford. I think you could do a lot with that defensively. It's probably... A, to, a, to me, the offense is the issue. Probably a lot, but not as much as we think. Yeah. I think there's a lot of coaches out there that are very underrated. Like? I think a lot of coaches should come out of college yeah. and show themselves. Oh, uh, coach like Kevin Ollie, you know Kevin Ollie. Okay. Coach of UConn, great coach, should come play Penny Hardaway. Yeah. yeah. I think he's in the second season, the first season. Yeah. One of the two in Memphis. I think Jim Beheim. Yeah. Okay. From um, uh, fucking uh, from Syracuse. Yeah. Um, even the North Carolina coach, or Coach K. Like, there's so many coaches that could really enable yeah. this team. Yeah. But no one's taking a risk. Yeah. OKC okay, took a risk. And it went okay. Yeah. It went well, but it went okay. Billy Donovan? Yeah. I don't even know if that was the best option at that point. Was, that was the only that was the only best Scott option. Brooks 2. He was He was like he was exactly like Scott Brooks. Cause I think everyone's gonna be everyone's gonna say he's Scott Brooks because Scott, Scott Brooks allowed him, uh what's his name to do whatever he wanted. Who? Katie? No, Katie Westbrook. and Westbrook, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which I mean they if they had a little bit of order, they probably would have won a championship. But yeah, yeah, they could go. I don't know if you trust a rookie coach like that to give give him a team like that and give him title aspirations right in the first year. You know that's hard. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely some changes that the Sixers need to make. But with that being said, with the way the East looks this year, I definitely feel like they are going to the finals. Still, I don't think Milwaukee has the firepower to to take them on. Oh, uh, that's just you know, like I just I don't see the Bucks going to the finals. I th- I don't see really anyone else. Like all these teams that every other year would have not made the finals. Like they're not that great, in my opinion. You know, it's just the fact that someone has to go from the East. So who is it? And then so I think it's the Sixers. They have the best. When we talked now. about this in the beginning of the first episode, yeah. where we said this year's East is going to be so rocky. Yeah. This year's East is like a girl in her period. Yeah. Women thank God for women don't watch this shit. Yeah. It's just like yeah. you don't know what's going to happen when it happens. Yeah. It's going to be one of those KBF first, second, third. I think the last five, six, seven, eight 
are going to be determined like the past ten, like ten games. Yeah, like the last ten games is going to be determined by five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think we just wait it out. Yeah, see where the fuck it goes. Yeah, but the way it's moving right now, yeah, it's moving great. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about this epic, epic run that Harden is doing right now. It's not epic. We can't say epic anymore. Why not? It's come. It's it's it's. It's been coming too natural in order to be like, yeah. like, yeah. Imagine Michael Jordan went and did the free throw dunk, right? Yeah. We'll be like, when the first time we're like, oh, yeah. came back the year later, yeah. did it again. Like, it's oh, like watching know. players constantly do through the legs dunk. We're over it. No, sorry to say it, we're over it. No, it's back to back, a hundred points. Yeah, great work. But yo, that- wait, 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 great work. What the fuck are you doing helping your team? Yeah, like. There's a game I watched where he went like nine for like twenty two. Yeah, and then he scored bare in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not basketball. Yeah, you need to contribute yeah. every fucking quarter. Not yeah. nine for twenty two or thirteen for thirteen for the free throw. Yeah. Thirteen yeah. for the free throw line is thirteen points. Yeah, you need more than that. Yeah, so I think they should really uh, consider not having him do the whole fifty point thing constantly. Yeah, because we can always enjoy fifty points. But I think the fans want more of like, hey, let's get a championship. Yeah. And if fifty points doesn't leave you does lead you to a championship, keep doing it. I don't think it will. Again, because you think it won't. Yeah. I think it won't. Yeah. I think it should stop. Yeah. But congratulations, it's back to back. But here's the thing. What what does that team have other than him scoring fifty points? What do a lot of teams have that are that, that are winning games? A lot of teams don't have much. Yeah. Giannis is not gonna drop fifty points a game. Yeah. I don't see Giannis doing that. I think okay, so like a lot of teams out there are not a lot of sorry, a lot of teams are not out there going and shooting fifty. Yeah. Not every player is going out and shooting thirty five shots a game. Yeah. No one's shooting twenty five percent. Like there's no team that's allowing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I feel like they're just allowing enabling him to do this because maybe they win one or two games by like two points. If this guy's scoring fifty points, I want to see hundred and fifty scoreboard on the down scoreboard. Yeah. Like it has to be hundred and fifty to like eighty five. Fifty points is a lot of points, not a little. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. But they scored like 140 one of those games. 140. Yeah. Uh, for what? A win or a loss? It was a win. A win. And the one before that was a win. I think so, yeah. Wow, two wins. Yeah. When it comes to playoffs, what is he gonna do? 50 points. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the, that's the biggest thing on Harden, man. I think we've Don't. seen everything we need to see in the regular season from Harden. Exactly. He's done everything in he's the regular season. Just like he's just like the Bucks. Yeah. We you get everything him. in the season, and the playoff time comes, he becomes, a, sh- he becomes a shrimp. He goes, I can't see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm, okay, no, I think it's more because of the fact that the refs swallow the whistles in the playoffs. Like, they don't really call as much. And it slows down, so he's not really that big pace. Like, you know, he can't go ch- 10, 10 shots in a row. Um, also, so let's talk about this Rockets team, then. The way they're constructed right now. What do you think? Do you think these guys can do some damage this year in the playoffs? No. You don't think so? No. Why is that? The two best players of the team are trash. Not, sorry. Not trash. Selfish. Selfish. That's the word. Not trash. Selfish. Yeah. Great players, yeah. but selfish. I feel like Westbrook and Harden are like those two, you know, two guys that come on to like um, come to the, the rec yeah. and they're like, all right, two of us and then two of the random guys want to play with us. And those two guys ain't passing to nobody but each other. Each other. It's like they ain't passing to nobody else. It's like watching um, those uh, two brothers, those twin brothers on Nevada when they went to like the NCAA, it's like yeah. watching them play. Yeah. They, they ain't passed to nobody else. Like no one else got love on the court yeah. but those two. Yeah. And that's what it's like for Houston. I honestly, I think they have a shot. I think this might be their best year to do it because the thing is, the way they've staggered their minutes, so whenever whoever's on the court, mm. No matter what, Westbrook or Harden is on the court. They both give you really similar. I think the biggest downfall for them is Westbrook shooting from three. Like, okay, so right now they've done a good job of, okay, so when Westbrook, they put him on the opposite side, and so or like the other side, and so when someone comes to double Harden off Westbrook sometimes, they give that ball, and, Hard, and Westbrook is going to get into the rim right away. So he's doing a good job of that. Playoffs is going to be completely different. However, I've the way they've been using Westbrook to facilitate and push the pace has been very well. Like I think, like they're using his strengths. Like they're letting Westbrook grab the board right off and push it coast to coast, and that's what he does. That's what he does best. That's the best part of Westbrook. Yeah, like that's what makes Westbrook an all star. Just the the fact that he can grab a board and push it. 
So they utilize that pretty well. Like I watched a couple of their games, and when Hard like and it gives Harden the breather that he needs. Uh, like yeah, I know he loves giving putting up fifties in the regular season. I think the reason why he has to cut that out is because he's been getting gas in the play when playoff comes. <laughs> he's been getting tired. Yeah, I think they should. In the regular season, not really worry much about seeding and getting 50 points and getting 40 points or whatever. Give Harden that more more of a break. Cut down his minutes by five minutes a game. Get him from 40 to 35. Give Westbrook the 35 as well. And left, and give Harden that extra break so when they go into the playoffs, they're both thing. You can go... If, if you can play 50 points, if you can play for all 48 minutes in the playoffs, go ahead. Do your thing. When the regular season, they shouldn't be wearing him as much as they do. Like, yeah, he hasn't gotten injured, but every postseason, he looks tired by the end of it. They, so, all, I mean, they, they all do, man. Yeah. Everyone, the whole... I feel like those two players just really wore themselves out a lot. Yeah. Which, like... If, if, I feel like they're looking like LeBron. Yeah. When LeBron had to go... Yeah. Against some big ass teams, yeah, you know I mean, yeah, like LeBron against like the Spurs a long time ago, yeah, he was gassed, yeah, he was having fun dunking on the Celtics and KG and blowing them out, but then when they got to the Spurs, they were just like yeah. deteriorated, like just yeah, exactly, they were done, yeah, and the the fact that the two of the high usage highest usage guys in the league, they should definitely be using each other to get that extra break. I think they will be more fresh for the playoffs this year than they were in other years. I think the fact that Westbrook is a lot more durable than Chris Paul was. Is going to play a huge role. I think Dante House. Uh, they have still have, they don't even have Eric Gordon back. Like he's doing all this because Eric Gordon's gone too. When Eric Gordon comes back, that takes a lot of pressure off Harden and Westbrook as well. Like that's another scoring option. That's a very good third th- option. He's like he can go for twenty any night. Like you know, Eric Gordon is a bona fide scorer. Uh, Tyson Chandler was a huge pickup for them. I really like that pickup. There are times that I want Tyson Chandler. On the floor, better more than Capella. Can I tell something? What? You love Houston way too much. I like, I'm wearing the hat. I know. You love them. I feel like you love them way too much. No, I re- <laughs> I like the fact that they've found their identity and they stick with it no matter what. They found that... Yo, As I'll pass the ball to uh, Jay Brandon, so you can do the money run for the ball afterwards? Beat whoever. If, he, if someone's open in the corner, hit him in the corner. If not, take it to the rim. Lob, dunk, shoot. Like, you know, no mid-ranges. Like, I kind of like the fact that they got off the, 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 the trail and figured out their own path, and they've gotten that close to the playoffs. I think, I generally think they, they're on the fringe of, like, you know, of making the playoffs. Like, it, they could have arguably won a Chris Paul injury, minus a Chris Paul injury. So, like, I feel like they're on that cusp. I like, I like Westbrook and Harden. Like, they're both... They're both very polarizing players. Like they cause a lot of controversy, which I like. Their games are very polarizing. Like they're either you either love like they either, they'll do something amazing, like take a rebound and go coast to coast and dunk it on the biggest guy in the court, or step back three, or they'll do something like a step back three and miss an air ball or shoot a brick. Like they're very polarizing players, and that's why I like about them because you never know what you can get. They're hit or miss. You can get you can get ten straight threes from them, or you can get ten straight misses from three. Like, you know, and I think that uncertainty is what I like about them. But there are a lot of teams I enjoy watching, though. You know? A lot of teams. I hate when you talk about the Houston Rockets. Why? I fucking hate this, it. This is how I feel when you talk about the Lakers. No, because you give them way too much love for a garbage team. How are they garbage? They've done, they've literally been on they the. They remind co- me of the Lakers with Smush Parker, I swear to God. No, they don't. And Russell Westbrook is like Karan Butler. I'm not kidding you. No, that sounds no. very disrespectful. No. I think it's very disrespectful. It's, it's like, like it's, abs- it's very disrespectful. They always come to Toronto and wreck them, too. I really like that. But, like, they, I'm telling you, man, like, like, you can't, like, I don't know how people hate Harden. I think he's nice. I think he's just, like, he's great. I just think he's better off with other people around him that help him. Like, Westbrook. Not Westbrook. Like Westbrook. Not Westbrook. I think you, I don't. I think you don't watch enough Houston games. They're a very entertaining team to watch. I watched one game. They're very. And that's when he went nine for twenty two. I'm not kidding. It was third quarter. It was nine for twenty two. Yeah. And I wanted to shut off my laptop. I okay. But in a big, in a big game though. It was, yeah. it was, it was like, yeah. He had like fourteen points in the fourth quarter, which was fantastic. The, to me, the reason why Houston's so entertaining to watch is you never know what. Like from from five minute stretch to five minute stretch, you never know what Houston you're gonna get. One five minutes, it's hard going shooting like 10 threes in a row. Next five minutes, it's P.G. Tucker is getting three th- corner threes in a row. And then the next five minutes, is Capella is getting like eight, like six dunks in a row. Like It's it's so sporadic and changey all the time 
that you can't really guess what they're what they're doing. Like it's always like, yo, like what are they gonna like? What is the next five minutes gonna look like? What are the next five minutes? It's very like different. That's why I like them. All the teams will come. The whole game they'll pick a role you to death. Whole game it's, yo, they go this guy, this guy, back screens, boom, like you know. These guys are very sporadic. That's what I like about them. That's just my, that's just my thing. Um, do you guys have do you have any other contenders or pretenders that you want to speak on? No, not really. Not really be contenders, or pretenders. Uh contenders. Actually, contenders Miami Heat. Why Miami pretenders. Heat? Pretenders. <clears throat> pretenders. They're too young. Okay. They're too young. Doesn't make them pretenders. No, no. You can't say someone's too young because of pretenders. No, 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 no. Let me finish. You can't say someone's too young because of pretenders. Yes, yes, I know the NBA has like, uh, they have to be veterans. They have to know how to play. Yeah. That's the play I was like. I just think in my head, they're a young team that's going to upset a lot of teams in the Eastern playoffs. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe surprise us. Yeah. I feel like Jimmy Butler is not just any leader. I feel like Jimmy Butler has the leader antics of like Michael Jordan on Wizards. Yeah, he has he has that like, you know he has that belt on. Yeah, I think they listen, they follow. Yeah. If they weren't following, Bam would be doing as good. Bam is unstoppable right now. Yeah. Bam's trying to get the like he's trying to be the best center in the league. Yeah, and I mean it's just there's just there's a lot of potential there for them to. I, th- I think that you just really doubting them really bad. Pretenders, go ahead. Here, oh, okay, here's why I think they're pretenders. A go. A, they're too young. Like, yeah, they're they, too young. their sum is not the total of their parts. They're a, they're a bunch of young guys that need to figure it out. They need to. They're playing out of. Okay, these guys are. Well, Kendrick Nunn's playing out of his mind. Bam Adebayo's playing out of his mind. Um, Duncan Robinson's playing out of his mind. I haven't really seen a lot from Tyler Hero, but he's, he's nice. He was, but he's okay. Yeah. So, like, these are guys that are unproven with no playoff experience whatsoever. They're. They're, they're good. They're going to be great in a few years if all those players keep rising to the occasion and keep getting some experience. But I think that right now, the fact that they're second or they're second in the East definitely makes them a pretender because they're not, they're not, any, they're not even the top 10 I would pick for uh, a championship run. And so the fact that they're second in the East, I feel like it's kind of like a, you know, like a fake second in the East. Like, yeah, they're winning games, but they're not going to win playoff games. I'm not going to argue with you. You know? I just think you're, I think they're really going to upset everybody. I think they're going to change the epidemic. In the NBA, get, but young get, players are going to be doing good. They'll get one round, max. <laughs> so they will not win more than a round. That's enough. That's a lot. And mm. that's good. But they're not winning one round, one round doesn't make you a contender. If you say so. It doesn't make you a contender. Speaking of Miami Heat. I did that for no reason. I just want to talk about Miami Heat. Uh, let's talk about the word Deion Waiters. Deion Waiters is a fucking madman. He's gone. I just want to go on top of that. He uh, Since the NBA started, yeah. Tyler Hero took his spot. <laughs> Man made him depressed. Man was thumping bare blunts. <laughs> it was actually an edible. Edible. Dog, no one's just thumping edibles. He did the edibles first, then he tried to get suspended, started thumping bare blunts. Yeah. Broke the violation there. Yeah. <laughs> Said, fuck it. They're going to trade him. Thumped boy. Tumped more, came on and said, uh, I can't feel sick, I can't play today. My man was on a boat in Miami with bitches. Yeah. That guy's sick. Yeah. Said, give me the money, nigga, I'm good. He's gone. But he's getting he's waved gone. or he's gone. He's getting waved. Yeah. He's getting destroyed. He's gone. And that sucks because Dan Wade Dan- 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 is a pretty good player. Like, he's a, he's a scorer. Like, he could help a team, but, like, he's his he's in his own head. He's like Josh Gordon of the NBA. Dun dun dun! Josh Gordon is gonna get cut right now. He got suspended. He really did. He got suspended. He got cut. He got cut this morning. He got suspended this morning. He this didn't get morning. cut. No, he's been suspended, released, cut, gone. Everything. Obviously, you think they're gonna keep him on a payroll for ha- what? Halas, halas, man. You can't play in the playoffs. Halas. For doing drugs again, right? Yeah, it was drugs and uh, it was a performance enhancing and thing, and substance abuse policy. Substance abuse. So it was definitely weed. Oh, uh, but yeah, that's the NFL. Um, this is the NBA we're talking about. And the other teams. We talked about the Pacers, which I am high on. Heat that I'm kind of low on. The Raptors, I'm okay on. Uh, Celtics, do we think the Celtics are contenders? They're playing well, <laughs> but I don't think they're contenders either. Pretenders? Pretenders. Pretenders. I definitely think so, too. They're, they don't have enough bigs. They don't have bigs. No, actually, this question. This is a big question. Yeah. Um, everyone's been, I've been hearing a lot of things. A lot of people are telling me, yeah. I'm a contender. 
Uh, but I think you'd say something else. Uh, I think you'd say pretenders. Uh, Denver Nuggets. Pretenders. <laughs> State why you can't just be seeing someone you can't just be seeing a great ass team as a pretending team but go because I don't think Jokic is a aggressive enough and I don't think their guards although they're good I don't think they are great I don't think they are on that Jimmy Butler Paul George Kawhi level and when they do have to play those guys in the playoffs they will get absolutely destroyed and clamped because. They're deep. They're deep and young, but I don't see them. They're just not like they're the way they play is just slow, not aggressive. It's very lackadaisical. It's what the word I'm trying to say. Lackadaisical. I think I said it right. <laughs> it's very like lethargic. It's like they're not. They're, they don't play with high energy. Like the Nuggets team we know from the past, high pace, boom, 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 boom. Take advantage of that that Denver altitude. Uh, high pace, high octane offenses. This team is like slow and like, like you know, like yeah, I get it. Your big guys, your your passing and running everything. I just I just don't see, uh, like I don't see like high power offense from them. I don't see enough offense from them, and I don't see. The, I don't think they have the defensive defensive players on that team. You are very disrespectful. Do you think they're going to win it? Or do you think they're going to go to the finals? They won't even make it to the Western Conference Finals. They only did last year. Uh, yeah, and they didn't. And then they lost because of bullshit. Because of bullshit. They're going to be a top... They're going to be a top three seed. They're going to be third or second. And still lose in the second round to a team that's under under them. So I'm not, I'm very, I'm not really high on them. I'm, I think they're pretenders. Anyone else? Go. Cool. Contenders, um, Nicola, Nicola playing playing pretty garbage right now, but yeah. we'll be playing good afterwards. After the All Star break, yeah. Jamal Murray did the same thing. Although, although a lot of them are not playing to the full potential at the moment, a lot of bullshit's been happening in the NBA with these play calls and all these uh, ref calls. Yeah. But as we continue the season, yeah. as you know, we are not that far into it. Yeah. Um. Contenders. Oh. As of now, contenders. Not surprising contenders, no. great contenders, might bust all everyone's ass. You just gotta give them to the, again. After the All Star break, is when really you know who the like full contenders or pretenders are. Oh, okay. that's where everyone starts to shine. But okay. I think we gotta wait and see. But for me right now, yeah. contenders, Devin Nuggets are great. Yeah. They pass the ball great. Yeah. They score amazing. And Michael Porter Jr. is terrible. Yeah. But Malik Beasley plays great. Yeah. And they have great oh, people. Oh, see, that's what this contingent on Michael Porter Jr. If they incorporate him into the offense, like I think they could. They, they, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Yeah, they there's don't no give him no burn. Yeah, there's a reason why they don't give him no burn. Why? Cause he can't play. Oh, man, I'm in this. He. <laughs> I'm in this. All right, yo. All right, guys. If you guys have any contenders or pretenders, or you guys have an opinion that is different from ours and want to argue in the comment section, go ahead. Add us, comment at us, tag us, whatever you want to do, and just argue with us. Because guess what? Me and with you have no time, right? <laughs> really? We have bare time, sorry. We have lots of time. Lots of time. So we Lots and lots of time. We want all the smoke. Every single one of you smokes, all right? So thank you. For watching the Off the Top podcast, not Off the Top uh, podcast. Uh, oh, uh, Off the Backboard podcast. The, yeah, it's, it's like it's like Off, off the, the backboard. backboard. All right, so thank you for watching the Off the Backboard podcast. If you have not subscribed, followed, shared, liked, retweeted, hashtag, storied, um, emailed, um, pen paled, seeker sandaled, um, our podcast. Send it to House Highlights, Omar. Yeah. From House of Highlights, congratulations to 15 million uh, followers today. Yeah. But brother, can I get on um uh, can a, I get on an episode? A repost. Get it, put up on a, put up on a, put on a repost. Or even make us the official House of Highlights podcast. There's already one though. Do they? Yeah, there's just four guys. They're pretty boring though. Yeah. The thing is, they have to do 40 minute episodes, but they're boring 40 minute episodes. Yeah. Who cares? I or anyone, any sports channel, pick us up. We have a UFC one coming as well. We do all sports. Any sport you guys want us to talk about, we could talk about. So pick us up someone, please. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Love you all. Keep throwing it off the backboard. Hope someone dunks it, guys. Easy. <laughs>